Victor Hugo was a 19th century French poet, dramatist, and novelist. Though in France he is known for his poetry, globally he is best known for The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Les Miserables. Though Hugo made many contributions to literature, he was unfortunately long dead by the time his works were cinematically adapted. As with most authors, Victor Hugo's work centers on some reoccurring themes. In film, this would normally be as a result of an auteur, but in Hugo's case, his death would seem to be a disqualifying factor, because as it is generally understood, the auteur is usually the director of the film. In its broader sense, however, an auteur must produce these trends. We can see this in Howard Hawke's fast-talking screwball comedies or in John Ford's westerns. And the only creative connective tissue between the filmic adaptations of The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Les Miserables is Victor Hugo. At first glance, the two films may not seem to have much in common besides being musicals. One deals with religion while the other deals with the law. One is live action while the other is animated. And neither seems to be particularly faithful to Hugo's literature. One of the side stories in Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame is the Archdeacon versus Judge Claude Frollo. The pair are often shown at opposite ends of the spectrum. When Quasimodo is orphaned, Frollo attempts to kill the child, but is stopped by the Archdeacon. Later, when Frollo is hunting Esmeralda, it is the Archdeacon who gives her sanctuary. The two are even costumed to be opposites, with the Archdeacon in white and Frollo in black. This isn't just unique to Disney, though. It can be traced back to the 1939 adaptation and the 1923 silent film before that, though not necessarily to Hugo's own work, which featured Claude Frollo, the Archdeacon, instead of two separate unique characters. This relationship seems to parallel that of Jean Valjean and Inspector Javert in Les Miserables. The two foils run into each other throughout the course of the film, often switching between dominant and submissive roles. In this film, it's easier to see that the two men are in fact personifications of the letter of the law and the essence of the law. Javert, a policeman, follows a strict adherence to the law. He insists on arresting Valjean no matter the amount of good he is able to do. He wishes to arrest Fantine, even though she is obviously suffering and on the brink of death. Valjean, a former convict, represents the essence, or conscience, of the law. His original crime is stealing a loaf of bread for his sister's starving child. He steals the church's silver, but uses the money to put other people to work. He sacrifices his own life for the well-being of others. Similarly, in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the archdeacon represents God, or the essence of religion, while Frollo represents the strict laws of the church. It's this struggle between right and legal that thematically connects the two adaptations. And Victor Hugo seems to have espoused these views in his personal life as well. He was raised Catholic, but riled against the church in his later years. He even told a census official who asked if he was Catholic, no, a free thinker. Thus, it makes sense that Hugo would explore this idea internally in his first novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and then externally in Les Miserables. While Hugo himself may not have explored this dynamic as external in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the adaptations do. And as a result, this idea of legal versus right becomes what would normally be the auteur's connecting theme. Auteur in this instance may not be the right word, but it is Victor Hugo who provides this theme. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. This was a much slower paced video, and so I have a feeling most people have tuned out by this point. If you liked it, please hit subscribe. This one was a lot of fun to make. Thanks.